Hello, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, May 9th. Today's topic is Google Chrome Extensions. Our special guest is Chris Giles. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, and Tammy Moore. Thank you to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for, for us today and every time she does closed captioning. Uh, I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy so that she's going to introduce Chris and ask the newbie question. Well, hello to all of you. I am so excited for this webinar. We're trying some new things today, and I'm even more excited because these new things are being shared with us by Chris Giles, who is a wonderful friend and colleague in Arizona. And I started going to his webinars uh, quite a while back <coughs> and discovered how much I love them. He does something really unique with his webinars, and he makes them hands-on. Well, we've never really done much of that in our shows, so I said, Chris, will you come and do that with us? And he agreed. So by hands-on, I mean that he's going to introduce us to some things, and if we have a Chrome browser open and want to go there and try try to download the extension he's telling us about and get going with it, we can do that. If you don't have your Chrome browser open and that's not possible for you, maybe bandwidth this is an issue, this will all be recorded so you can go back and pause it and um, work through it afterwards. But Chris is an amazing educator. He lives in Phoenix, Arizona where he creates and facilitates professional development for teachers across the state for the Arizona Department of Education. He and his family just recently moved back from Brazil, where both he and his wife taught. He's a former design technology teacher. He's a K through five PYP technology teacher, and he was a technology coordinator at an IB school. So in addition to his international teaching experience, Chris has over 15 years of teaching experience in public schools, and he is passionate about sharing what he knows to help educators everywhere, and he'll be telling us some ways we can do that. The Arizona Department for Education, where um, Chris provides his professional development, um, is a K-12 academic standard site, and they help teachers everywhere. You don't have to be from Arizona to participate in them. So after you've heard him today, you may want to join some of his other webinars. He is obviously EdTech passionate, and so we are thrilled to welcome him. And I am going to go on to the newbie question and ask Chris to answer this question for us, since some of you may not be familiar with Chrome extensions. And Chris, start us off by what are Google Chrome extensions, and welcome. OK, good morning. How is everybody today? Hopefully you're doing just great. You can hear me? Yep, OK, good. Here yes, we go. we're hearing so, great. All right, awesome. So we're going to talk about today about Chrome extensions. And this is a great question. What are Chrome extensions? Uh, before I get started, really briefly, I just want to say good morning. Uh, and thanks again to Peggy, Lori, and Tammy for allowing me to be guests uh, on today's show. I'm really super excited and a bit nervous to be here. Um, so what are Chrome extensions? You know, and anybody can Google it, and I'm sure you probably all have Googled it at one point in time. And basically, they're basically small software programs that can modify and enhance the Chrome browser's functionality. Okay, well, that sounds like a lot to say, and we're going to get more into exactly what it does and what they are as well. And again, if you think of Chrome extensions, they're just basically a way to make Chrome you can customize Chrome to basically meet your needs and the needs of your students. Um, and my big uh, thing with Chrome extensions are basically enabling us to do things with fewer clicks. And that's kind of 
what I like to say about Chrome extensions. You know, we can do things with fewer clicks. So I do want you to know that this is how I run my webinars. I, we, we do hands-on when I provide webinars for teachers in Arizona. Um, I won't be able to monitor the chat as much today as I normally would, so we have some other people helping out. But there will be times of silence today because that's when you will be working on a specific task that you'll have to do. So if you're like, hey, why is it so quiet? It's because everybody's going to be working on a task. And you will have a time limit for those tasks as well. And I want you to make sure that you have fun today. And if you have any questions, of course, um, definitely by all means ask away. And if I can't get to it, I know that there's other people in our group who will get to it today. So digital tools, helping us do what we do better. And this, again, is what we think about Chrome extensions. So I, earlier I had mentioned, you know, what is a Chrome extension? And, and if I want to kind of briefly make it even a, in a better exa example of what it really is, basically it's the user, you and I, can personalize Chrome browsers with extra functions and features. Extensions extend the functionality of Chrome. So, you know, besides just being a web browser, what else can we do with Chrome? Versus apps, because there's a big difference between extensions and apps. And apps are applications that run inside of your browser with a dedicated user face. So you really can get involved. And if you look below, I have a calculator, page notes, and extensity as my um, difference between extension. Those are my extensions. And then off to the side, I have apps. Instagram, there's one Instagram, there's a typing club, and Edmodo. Those are specific apps. And again, I, you know, I just brought a couple pictures. So again, a calculator. It's an extension. It works right there. It doesn't have to be downloaded. It, I'm sorry, I take ball. It has to be installed on Chrome, but it doesn't have to be downloaded onto your computer. And it doesn't matter what web page you're on, a calculator will work instantly without even interfering with the web page. So I just want you to know there is a difference between extensions and apps. And I, every day, am learning more about the difference. Again, one more thing about Chrome extensions and apps is the big thing to remember, too, is they're, they're approached differently. You get to them in two different ways. Um, if you have a Chrome browser, you might have the Chrome Apps Launcher, which is typically on the left. And then on the right-hand side, your extensions are on the menu bar. So again, Chrome Apps and Chrome extensions are located in two different locations, and they can be accessed differently as well. And that's really important to remember because some people get a bit confused uh, when it comes to the two of them. So let's take a quick look. And again, if you're not familiar with the way I do webinars, I show some examples, I model, I demonstrate, and you do. So I want you to know that in a few minutes, you're going to get a chance to go ahead and get do doing what we're going to talk about today. So it is important that you have a Chrome browser, and it is important in order for you to participate on our hands-on. So when we look at the Chrome store, uh, it's I like it because it's simple. It's just, you know, there's the store. It has a list of extensions and apps that do show up. When you get into the actual store itself, you can search through apps. You can, you can search for extensions. And you can search for themes. And then you can get really into it. And you can really drill down as far as, well, I only want apps that are only from Google. Or I want apps that have to do with business tools. And so it's, it's very similar to the, to the iTunes store, where you can really kind of drill down and be specific about what you're looking for. Again. Um, you can be more, you can specifically search for apps and extensions and themes. And that's really important when you start to begin to search in the store. Once you do choose something that you really like, and you're like, oh, I really like this one. And this is a wonderful extension called AdBlock that blocks the ads from YouTube. But before you install, I love looking at the reviews. I love looking at the related tab. Because if I don't like this extension, after a while, I come back and I click on the Related tab and I go, what else is similar? And I always look at the ratings. You know, and this, person, and this one, when I took the picture a few weeks ago, you know, has, what, 10 million plus users. Like, it's just ridiculous how many people. So if that many people are using it, more than likely, it's probably going to be a pretty solid extension to use. And then and finally, when I'm ready to install, you'll notice in the top right, it says free. Now, not all are free. But our, our focus today is free. And you, you just simply click Install. And it will ask you for one more window. It will say, are you sure you want to install it? And uh, by all means, you say yes. Again, one more time, the difference between extensions and apps. I typed in Evernote in the store, and there's two apps for Evernote. But if you, realize, if you look in the red box, it's also an extension. So there is a difference, again. And there's a difference in how they relate and how they work for you. 
So when we think about teacher problems, this is probably a problem that most of us can identify, you know. If you ever want to know what's, what's going on in a teacher's mind, it's like having, you know, over 2,000 tabs open at the same time. So this leads me to this question, and you can type this in the chat box, but how many tabs have you had open at the same time? So if you want to just quickly type in, you know, I've had 10 or 15 or 20, I know that Peggy's probably going to go ahead and chime in because I do know her magic number. She did mention to it one time before. 289, see, there you go. I was hoping that Peggy would say some re crazy number. Yeah, too high to count. Yeah, see, even that's more exciting. If you, you know, and, and if you think about it, how do I really possibly count all of those little tiny tabs? There's a lot of them. Yeah, and then your computer crashes or you have to restart Google uh, Chrome. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a bit scary, um, and I don't know about you, but here's my experience with tabs. I'm on a webinar, and the person is, is throwing things at me like a fire hose, and now I have 50 tabs open, the webinar is over, and I'm frozen. I don't know what to do. So my one favorite that I've been using very often is called OneTab, and if you just basically click, literally click, once you've installed it, you click on OneTab, you'll notice that my little box on the bottom down there basically takes all of those tabs and put them some in a list. What? What's even more powerful than just putting them in the list is the fact that after they're in a list, I can then share this with anybody I want. And it even creates a QR code. So it's a very powerful, very powerful extension. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, another example, um, again, a problem, teacher problems. You know, you, you found a great article, you want your students to read it either online or you want to print it, but you obviously see Gosh, there's way too much advertisement happening. Well, in comes in this beautiful extension called Clearly, which literally at a click of a button, if you notice, all the, all the advertisement's gone, all the, all the distractors from this article are gone, and I can print it just like you see, and it's a beautiful, beautiful um, extension. And let's move on to Dayboard. Um, you're like, well, what is Dayboard, Chris? Well, it, you know, you, you've got some notes. You've got to start taking notes down, or you have a to-do list. Well, with Dayboard, you can go ahead and create your top five things to do each day, and if you notice in front of you, I can go ahead and cross out as I continue to do some things. So Dayboard is a great task reminder. You can only do five, though. Okay, hey, for Move It, um, my original picture, I had a picture of a, of a student who was working on the computer, but you're sitting at your computer all day long, Ah, and you're really sore. Well, Move It is an extension where you can type in exactly how long you want at the time, and after a certain amount of time, one minute, five minutes, ten minutes, it comes up with another window that tells you what to do. So in this case, climb a ladder on the spot for a count of ten, and then get going. And finally, I think this is my next one I think that I want to show, and then we'll move on, is called Goo. Uh, you know, again, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory in that you go to a conference, and the, the conference presenters hands you out the notes for the day, and you notice these gigantic URLs printed on their paper. And you think, there's no way I'm going to go back home and type in these. So enter Goo, which is the ability to go ahead and take those massive long URLs and shorten them with one click. And if you can see on my picture, it even turns it into a QR code. So if I want to go ahead and print that QR code for my students to be able to go to certain websites, they can hold it up their camera, on a Chromebook, and it instantly goes to that website or that application. Great, great extension. So any thoughts, any comments so far? I, I'm not trying to go as fast as possible. I, I, I have the task that I want us to really get into. So any thoughts or comments? Um, again, if you have any questions, we'll get to the questions in a few minutes, but what do you think so far? Clearly. Yeah, absolutely. And you will see clearly again. Clearly, you will see clearly once again, so we'll get into that. Okay, so one more thing before we get any further, um, and this is, screen's really small and I apologize, but basically the screen says um, most are, f they're free, there's, there's different, different ways of dividing them up. I divide them up into free and one click, like a calculator is literally one click and I'm going on a calculator. There's free, but then they, but they can also be connected to other services, clearly can be connected to Evernote. And then there's free, but an account is required to log in to use that extension. An example is Digo, which is phenomenal uh, extension for saving everything under the sun in Digo. But again, you need to have an account. So our extensions today are going to be a mixture of free in one click and free 
period. So our, our goal, of course, is to talk about free. So this is where I need for you to just take a deep breath for a second, because I'm going to show you and demonstrate to you what I mean by this task. So it's okay to, 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 to take a break for a second, but I'm going to give you this task where you're going to install specifically Extensity and one tab, uh, and it says purple tiles in the set and off to the side, and I'll tell you exactly what that means in just a minute. And then it also says you're going to install two or more other Chrome tiles from the red tiles, and I will tell you in a moment what that looks like. And then I want you, if you're, if you're new to extensions, I want you to try to uninstall it. And then I want you to reinstall it. And I only want you to disable it. So in other words, if you've never used Chrome extensions, you're like, Chris, I have no idea. This is a good chance where you're going to get it, go ahead and do that. So at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and do application sharing. I'm going to show you my page. And when I'm done in just a moment, I'm going to put this timer on and then I'm going to give you five minutes to do this and we'll come back and reflect. So I'm going to go back up to application sharing. And the first thing you should see is the Chrome store, but this is specifically where I want to go. I want to go to this. This is my Symbaloo page and we'll make sure you have this in just a moment. Uh, and I realized that um, the wording was, it was different than originally anticipated, but that's okay. What I want you to do in just a moment is you're going to specifically install Extensity and OneTab, if you haven't done so. And then I also want you to go ahead and install one of these other ones, Move It, Clearly, the Basic Calculator. And the goal is, again, is to practice. So you'll get this link in just a moment. Once you get the link, you just click on the tile, it takes you right to the store, and then you're going to go ahead and add it. Mine's already added, that's why it says add it, so it's already green. As a matter of fact, it's going to be right here in the top right-hand corner, and if I click on it, this is what Extensity does. It turns off and on all of the extensions that I have. If they're gray, they're no longer visible. If it's bright colored, then you'll notice that it's there, and if, you, if I press calculator, watch what happens to the calculator disappears. So the extension is mine, it's on my computer, it's in my browser, but I can hide it and go back and forth. So now, as far as my instructions, and I'll have to go back to my page real quickly, but my instructions tell you that I want you to go ahead and I want you to basically install Extensity in, in one tab, and then I want you to install two more, but then I want you to practice uninstalling. Well, Chris, how do we do that? Okay, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to uninstall Goo. And basically, if I just take my mouse and I right click or hold down control on a Mac, I can just click on it, and then I can just go ahead and up comes this little menu bar, and I can remove from Chrome. Are you sure you want to remove it? Absolutely. <gasps> okay, Chris, how do I get it back? Don't stress. Because now we're going to go back to our Symbaloo page that you're going to have the link to, and then you can go ahead and add it one more time. Um, <laughs> oh, here he is right here, watch, Goo, he's one of the red ones, and then again, add it, boom. Now, Chris, you also mentioned uh, options, what do you mean by options? If you hold down the right key, the, the control key, or you right click on any extension, you'll see where it says options, and the reason why options are very powerful is because sometimes you can get extra bonus features with that extension. Not all of them, but some of them you can. Uh, for example, with the calculator, I can go ahead and change the colors just because I want to. So let me go back to your instructions. I'm going to go ahead and quit application sharing. And what I'm going to have you do, one second, is you're going to go ahead, and here's the instructions. I'll leave it up for you, but I want you to go ahead and you type on that single loop page, and that brings you up to my page. And I'm going to set my clock for five minutes and you're going to go ahead and insert, it says purple, but they're supposed to be green, I do apologize, um, the green tiles, and you're going to go ahead and do one or two of the other red tiles. And I'm going to start my timer, and I'm going to set it for five minutes. And I'm here, but I'm going to be silent, so I don't interrupt you. And if you have any questions, you can chat me in the box, but I'm going to go ahead and put my mic on mute just so that you guys aren't distracted by me.
Okay. So, I hope that you can hear me. It's, we've had about 20 seconds left. Um, if all you did was one and you played with it, congratulations. You did exactly what I was hoping you would do. Um, so again, remember, there's uh, no stress. It's, it's just about playtime, explore, uh, much like we would do with our students. We really want them to start to begin to work in something. We let them kind of explore to release that stress. Oh, nice job. There's our timer. So this brings me to this question. What are your thoughts and comments? What do you think so far? Did you install one of the ones that you haven't done before? Do you, well, I saw that some people were like, oh, I don't like installing, and that's okay. I can hear that. Um, but what do you think so far? Thoughts, comments, aha moments, or concerns? I'll give you just about a moment. Easy to install from the Simflu, yes, and that's why we set it up that way, <laughs> so that you didn't have to go to the store and look for it. Uh, good, it's good to hear that it's easy to install, I like that, that's what we want to hear. What about uninstalling or playing with an option? Were you able to uninstall and play with an option, or at least check it out? Can Google Chrome get overloaded? I think you can have too many extensions because the extensions work a little bit differently, so I tend to not have more than five happening at the same time. That's just my opinion. And yes, you've tried installing. Okay, good. Okay, awesome. Well, let's get moving. Um, so, how many? What do I? Oh my gosh, I'm like freaking out. There's so many extensions. How do I know what extensions to install, and why do I need them? And it's a, it's a question that probably teachers should ask themselves before they start just installing stuff. And the reason why is because this brings me up to this great quote, which by no means is my quote, but. You know, nobody ever, whoever, nobody who ever bought a drill wanted a drill, really wanted a drill. They really wanted a hole. And yes, it's a great quote. So it's, it's that, well, I want, Chrome, I want Chromebooks in my classroom. Okay, but why? I want iPads in my classroom. Why? So, you know, I want Chrome extensions. Why? So it's, not so, it's maybe the wrong question we're asking. So instead of saying, I, I want Chrome extensions or I want iBooks, or uh, uh, Chromebooks, it might be maybe instead, I want, my, I want Chromebooks or I want Chrome extensions so that my students can. So it's really important to remember, again, what's, what's, what's the purpose, the task, the purpose in your audience when we're choosing a lot of these extensions. And of course, students choose them because honestly, I think they might need them. So our next batch, which we're going to get to in just a minute, you're going to see quite a few um, more that were really exciting. The next part this brings me up to is just the content standards, um, you know, I had originally put in my ELA standards. Um, you know, it's my responsibility to teach my students to make sure that they know what, what's happening, and so I use the standards to do that. If I'm a, a English, a, an English teacher, or I'm a math teacher, I have my content standards. Well, these extensions can work across all content. So it's not so much just the extension, it's I want my students to be successful in the content that I'm teaching. So let's, let's talk about a few more. Now, these ones are these, I call these super-powered extensions because they require more than one click. For example, Black Menu for Google is an amazing uh, extension because it ties right into Google Drive. However, the extra click that you do need is you do need to allow it or to access your Google Drive. So these I consider the super-power extensions. Um, when students are doing research, they're online, they're using the computers. Another amazing extension for students to use is called Page Notes, where students can go ahead and type notes specifically about that web page uh, and save them, and they can even export them um, to be used in other ways. And you notice that, they, that I have a list here, and this is just a list that actually I can click on that list. And my notes, where I can edit my notes, I can actually go back and type in more notes specifically to what I had just done on that website. Uh, if you're not familiar with Read, Write for Google, I, I, I could spend a whole day talking about this. Uh, I can't, but I can just tell you right now one of the most amazing extensions out there, um, if you've never used it. Students can listen to any text. It'll play for, if they highlight, it'll play any text. Students can uh, use a dictionary right there on the spot. There's a picture dictionary. They can highlight, simplify a page just like they can do with clearly. Oh, good question. I'm going to answer your question unless somebody else does in just a moment. And one of the most powerful things about Read Write for Google is after a student has used it, they can actually highlight, let's say they're highlighting an article um, 
or and they want to go ahead and sh and, and save their highlighted notes, there's a little tiny button that says collect all highlights and it'll send you right to your Google Drive and or to your Google Docs. And so here's an example of what I've highlighted from an article. It sends it right to my Google Drive. My students who are collaborating in Teams can now share what they've done in their notes in Google Drive. And somebody asked, is it free? The extension is free, but here's the most amazing piece about it. You can't get to any of these play, or there's a few other extensions, a few other premium account features you can't get to. However, there is a link, and I think we have it somewhere, where if you're a teacher, you, are, you literally just fill in the information with your email and it automatically activates all the premium features for free. Um, I cannot tell you enough about what amazing extension ReadWrite for Google is. And yes, it's free for teachers. There's a free version, but then there's a free premium version for teachers. And that's what's the most amazing thing. Um, and so I set this up a couple weeks ago and I've been using it for a while. No, not a trial. Um, another amazing and powerful extension is called Awesome Screenshot. Um, oh my gosh, so amazing because not only can I take a screenshot of whatever I want to work on, but I can annotate in that screenshot instantly. I can crop it. And you, if you notice, I left the uh, menu bar for the read write, uh, for the read, for the write, read and write Google right there. Um, and then watch, I go to the next page. I love this. Um, not only can I go ahead and take screenshots, but I can share those screenshots. Um, I can save it to my Google Drive. Awesome screenshots, another amazing, powerful extension that is free. Okay? So bear with me. Don't, don't run away from me yet. So hold on a second. Um, this takes us to task two. And again, these are our super powered extensions. So in this case, what I want you to do is install two or more of the pink tiles from my same Symbaloo page. Yes, Snagit uh, is a good one, but I think awesome screenshot might have a little bit more edge, but it's all up to the user. Um, so at this point in time, task two is I want you to install two or more of the pink tiles, but now I really want you to get into how it is used. So I'm going to give you five minutes again, and if you want to go do read write right now and, and sign up for the account and get that premium account, you can. That is no problem at all. But again, we're going to do the exact same setup where I'm going to go ahead and give you the five minutes to work. So just briefly bear with me for just a moment. I'm going to go to my application sharing. And again, here's my symbol page that I've shared with you and Peggy will put back in there. Here are all the pink tiles. Awesome screenshots right there. Uh, and you might say, Chris, well, how come th some have pictures and some don't? The ones that have a funny suitcase picture are the ones that require further um, action. Like you might need to log in. You might, to, you might need to accept um, its permissions. Like, for example, black menus right here. You might need to accept the fact that it's going to access Google Drive. So the reason why I specifically set this up was that you would know the difference. Digo, Evernote, all of these were either require accounts or an additional permission. So that's why I have them set that way. It doesn't mean don't use them. It means by all means be, be able to use them. So I'm going to come back to my page and I want you to specifically install two and I really want you to get into it. And if I can give you one advice to try one that you haven't done yet, it's the red tile and it's called Speak It. And I would strongly suggest you find an article, you install Speak It, and you have fun with Speak It for sure. So let's go back. Let's set our clock for four minutes. I know that sounds terrible. You're like, Chris, we had five minutes last time. Uh, I know, um, but I have a feeling that we're probably going to run out of time. So four minutes is what you have. Um, yeah, Speak It rocks. I, I cannot talk about Speak It enough. So I'm going to put myself on, can I speak Spanish? It can speak Russian. I'm going to tell you, you've got to play with Speak It. It's amazing. But again, it's options. You've got to go into the options. So I'm going to stop talking. Um, here's your instructions. Go to the Symbaloo page that Peggy put in. And I want you to have some serious fun. And then we'll come back in 3 minutes and 36 seconds. There we go. Sorry. I realized that uh, you couldn't hear me. Thank you. So what are your thoughts and comments? I'd love to hear your feedback on that one. Having a little trouble figuring out the awesome screenshot and actually drawing. Yeah, it, it took me a few minutes and that's okay. So if you chose one and you stuck with one and you played with it, 
that's awesome. And I love that I <laughs> love that people are putting exclamation points at the end of what they're saying. That must mean you're happy because I don't see any sad faces, and that's just really exciting. Awesome. Yes, and some people are talking about how Google Apps for Education administrators can push out the extensions. Yes, that's a different world for most. Um, I was an administrator, um, but we, we, our students, we allowed our students to, to basically log in and to basically install their own. In Brazil, we had um, a much more lax environment. Um, quite honestly, we only had 300 students, and out of the 300, only 230 of those were actually using Google all the time. In my class, they had to use it. They didn't have a choice because that's how we rolled. So let's move on. Um, you're probably asking, well, Chris, what are your top five uh, Chrome extensions? And well, here are my top five. Push bullet. I can, I, I'm going to tell you, amazing. If you're on an article on your phone and you're like, you know what, I really want to go ahead and put this on my computer because I want to print it or something, on push bullet, I send it from my phone to my computer instantly. I take a picture on my phone, I send it to my computer instantly. Why? Um, I have a need for it, and that's what Push Bullet does. Goo, I can't tell you enough about Goo, and you can use Biddle as well. I'm not against uh, bit.ly. Pocket, amazing because it's, it's like that um, you find an article, you're like, I don't have time to read it right now, I'm going to save it to my pocket. Amazing. Uh, Extensity, which is the one that I showed you earlier, which you can actually hide and um, and move the extensions back and forth. And yes, you do have to have pu pu uh, push bullet. Sorry, you have to have push bullet on your phone in order for you to use it from one device to another. That's the whole point of push bullet is one device to another. So it could be on your phone, it could be on your iPad. Absolutely, um, extensity. And then Deco and Symbolo are tied because I use them quite a bit. Uh, as you can see on my Symbolo page, it's really important for me to to kind of keep what's happening on my Symbolo page. Um, and Digo kind of goes without saying, but again, Digo and Symbolo, you need to have an account. And Pocket, you do need to have an account. And Push Bullet. But the good thing about Push Bullet, even Goo, Pocket, and Digo and Symbolo is, is quite honestly, I just use Google as my login. So I don't have five different accounts. I use Google to log into all of them. Um, what if it's on Facebook? And yeah, if there's an article on Facebook that I have found, I open. I, I what I do is I copy the link, go to Push Bullet, and send it to whatever device I want to send it to. It's an amazing extension. Okay. Well, sadly, we're kind of out of time, so I kind of want to wrap up today with a couple things that I want you to think about. So, classroom connections. I'm hoping that today you can see the classroom connections. And not only classroom connections, but even connections with teachers. If you're a coach, and I saw some people were coaches, how can you support your teachers by showing them just a couple quick, simple, easy tools that will really make their day more productive and quite honestly probably make them smile because they'll think, oh, all I had to do was this. So classroom connections, and then of course they bring up the student connections. You know, um, each school has their own rules, their own, their own um, procedures and policies about how technology is integrated and, and, and uh, accounts and logins. Uh, my experience in Brazil was this, we let our students have their own Google accounts. We, we were at Google Apps for, school, for Education School. Uh, we felt comfortable with our students being able to uh, install Chrome extensions. And quite honestly, in the two years I lived there, uh, we never had any problems. So it was quite an amazing uh, adventure. And then finally, how does it all fit together? Well, this is where you take the information that we have provided and you turn it into knowledge. And knowledge is basically constructed by you and how it's going to be used in your classroom to support teachers, to support student learning. Um, I did want to mention, yeah, here it is right here. I do want to mention who I work for. And I work for the Arizona Department of Education. And we love teachers. We support teachers. We love teachers. We love providing them with incredible um, PD. And um, so upcoming PD, we have one. So what I wanted to mention specifically is May 12th, we have one called Chrome Extensions for Struggling Students. So the Read Write one that I had showed you earlier is an amazing extension for some of our struggling students, especially the ones that struggle with reading. So just let you know. So you, you can't really click on those links, I don't think. But anybody's welcome to any of our PD. And talk, we, we provide amazing math PD. We provide an amazing uh, English language arts, science, and STEM. And it's all free. You get one hour of PD, just like you do when you come here today and you listen to um, Classroom 2.0. Um, so I can't talk highly enough about the people I work with who love, love, love teachers.
Uh, and then finally, my, my information down below, my O Canada, if you haven't figured it out, I am from Canada. <laughs> it's funny, I'm from Canada. My wife was born in Germany. She's an American. My girls are both Americans, born in Arizona, but they're Canadian citizenship because of me. And then my son Kai is Brazilian because he was born in Brazil, but he's also born, he's also an American. So we have a very eclectic, fun international family, uh, even though we don't look very international. <laughs> but we do love to travel. <laughs> so I'm finished, I think. Thanks so much, Chris. I did capture questions, but I was also trying out, so I might have missed a few. Um, <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> do you what, want me to stay on the mic? Yes, please. Okay. okay. Um, what can you do to cluster some of your icons on your toolbar? I have so many, I cannot see the URL window. You know, that's a good question. What I do, again, I go back to that one Extensity app right. uh, extension, and I, and I just turn them off. I, because I have seen Chrome stop working with, mm -hmm. with multiple extensions, so I, I just turn them off, and I, I honestly, I use four or five all the time, and those are the ones I use. Um, and then I know where to get them if I need to load it pretty mm -hmm. quickly. So mm -hmm. great. That's my best. My best. Uh, is there a tutorial or instructions on how to use Awesome Screenshot? Uh, you know what? I I I would imagine there probably is, and I bet you there's probably some seven-year-old kid on <laughs> who's already done it. Uh -huh. um, I I didn't use a tutorial. I, I sometimes I like to make a mess of learning. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> however, it's a great question, and I bet you somebody has created one, or the person who asked that. They should create a tutorial <laughs> with screenshots. And I did, I did capture the name too, so I don't want to put okay. anybody on the spot. So. <laughs> uh, this was a sidebar question. Yeah. Um, and it had to do with your classroom image. Uh, this person said that was a wonderful classroom image. Is it licensed for use? This person would like to use that image. Which one was it? The the one with the I think teachers? the students. I think it was the student image. The all student of my staff. pictures are all from Pixabay, so they're all copyright free. Okay. Uh, or if the only one that wasn't was the Twitter picture that I took, but I made sure it was it, when I went and did my Google search, mm -hmm. it fell under uh, for non-commercial use. So all those pictures from Pixabay and the one about you know the tabs and teachers' brains was the one mm -hmm. that was in Google. So yes, by all means, use them because I got them from Pixabay. I make sure all of my resources are copyright free to the best Great. of my ability. Um, uh, I'm not sure what this is. Maybe Sophia can help clarify the question. So I need to do this on my students' Chrome apps for PPS. What are the steps so they can use the extensions? We share Chromebooks and iPads. You know, if it were my class, it depends on how it's set up, but if it were my class, each of my students has their own account for Google. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even if we share computers, a student would still have to log into Google with their Google account. Right. And once they log in, it doesn't matter what computer they're using, those extensions should follow their account regardless. Um, okay. And somebody had mentioned earlier that some administrators can, can push those extensions out. Mm -hmm. to all the computers, and, and that, that thing, if you have somebody who, who is there for you to do that, I would go talk to them because that would make your life easier. Yeah, um, then you don't would, have to do it. Yeah, yeah. But I would also, honestly, if you feel comfortable with your students doing it, I would let, I would let my students do it um, because I've already gone through them. I know which ones I want them to use, and so I mm -hmm. feel comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. Those are good questions. Uh, do they automatically update? From my understanding, yes. However, you do need to make sure that you also update Chrome. Uh -huh. uh, I have had to. I have actually had to delete Chrome altogether and reinstall Chrome because I couldn't install extensions. So it's important that you do both. You just make sure Chrome is updated. Right. Uh, and 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 because you're not responsible for the extensions, the the uh, the, the creator is. So more than likely, the answer would be yes. They are updated. Great. But I will tell you also that they also go out of date. One of our favorite ones, um, Too Long Didn't Read, is no mm -hmm. longer, does no longer work. So if you've never seen Too Long doesn't re Didn't Read, <gasps> amazing extension, no longer works. <laughs> so. And practice sites. Can we use uh, practice sites after the webinar? Oh, like you, are you talking about the, the symbol page? Because I'm not going to leave, I'm not going to touch that symbol page. If I do anything, it's to, increase it or add more. So 
if you're a Symbolo user, add that to your mix. mix I did. Your own. Yeah, mix your own <laughs> Symbolo and go for more. Absolutely. I think those were the questions I did manage to capture. If anybody else has questions they have not asked yet, please do so. Uh, or if some people in the in the audience here are extension users, apps users of Chrome, and would like to share in the mic, we can do that too. Yeah, and I put that link in again for Read Write for Google, where mm -hmm. the teachers just register, and it's a free account. Amazing extension. So Glenn or Maureen, would you either one of you like to get on the mic? Oh, uh, when an extension asks for Gmail, do you use a personal email or a school email? Um, my opinion, I always use personal, and the reason why is if I leave that school, then my information stays with that school's account, right. like mm -hmm. in Brazil. So I, in Brazil, I, I had two accounts specifically, so that when I left, uh, I get to keep my material. Right. Yeah, that's, that's what I've done too. Well, thanks so much, Chris. I think those were the questions I was able to, to capture and, and uh, make note of. Awesome. I really appreciate being here. You, you guys were an amazing audience, the most captive, engaging audience I've ever seen. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy to introduce our upcoming shows. Oh, I'm so excited, Chris. That was fantastic. And I know I, for one, am going back to the recording so I can get my browser open again and pause it and try some things out that I wasn't able to do during this short time. But thank you so much for sharing this. And I hope everyone will consider logging into your Arizona webinars so that they can learn other tools in this same great hands-on format. Thank you. Upcoming shows, we have some wonderful shows coming up. Next Saturday, we have an amazing ninth grade high school student who did a keynote presentation in the Student Technology Conference. Her name is Sydney Sharon. And she's going to show us and, and help us learn how to create movies. And she will use a couple of different tools, but more importantly, share why it's so important for students to have those visual kinds of experiences. We won't have a show on May 23rd, because that's Memorial Day weekend in the United States. But on May 30th, Tech with Tia is joining us. She has the most amazing STEM live binder you will ever see. And she's going to be sharing that day on just one tab from her live binder that focuses on science websites web tools and apps, the whole gamut. And she not only tells you what the link is, but she tells you how you use it with your kids and does a quick demo of each site so you can see how neat it is. Then on June 6th, we have the amazing Lisa Johnson. You may know her as Tech Chef for You, here to share Canva with us, another amazing tool. And I know you're going to love learning about that. And then June 13th, we're going to have another math playground update from Colleen King, who will be joined by Bob Sprankle, who is now working with her on math playground. They have so many new apps now, in addition to what's on the website, and it's all free. An amazing playground for math experiences. So I hope you'll join us for as many of those as you can. And it, remember, if you can't, you'll be able to watch it on the recording after it's over. And I'll share those links as we wrap up here. Lori, go ahead. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest venture. He's gathered together all of, of his professional development resources in one place including host your own webinar. So you can sign up for your own Blackboard Collaborate room and have your own webinar as long as you make that webinar public. It's free. You can also nominate a featured teacher or nominate yourself for a featured teacher of a month. 
um, with the form at this link. There's also a tab in the Live Binder in the Classroom 2.0 Resources area at the bottom of the monthly Live Binder. When you exit the session, you should have a tab open in your browser for the survey for Classroom 2.0 Live. There's also a direct link here that Peggy will post in the chat. Um, it's also another tab in the Live Binder in the resources area. So there are three different ways to get to the survey. And when you go to the survey, at the bottom of that is where you can ask for the professional development certificate. Um, there's a field for your name, and your name then prints on the certificate. And there's also a field for an email. Please use a personal email address to receive their certificate. Schools tend to block the certificate from arriving. So again, the certificate is in the survey at the bottom. Someone asked about the archived resources. There are a number of ways to get to those. One is the iTunes U area for both video and audio collections. So that's one way. Another way is from the website. There's an RSS feed as well as the full recordings. The entire history is here. Again, very special thanks to Chris Giles, our special guest today, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our website, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today, thank you so much for coming.